Hello everyone, I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and today we are setting up WordPress on a new Ubuntu 19.04 server. Okay everybody, so WordPress is one of the internet's most popular content management systems. It's also one of the easiest to use. So if you're looking at setting up a personal blog or website, you might be thinking about using WordPress to do that. Now you can use WordPress.com to have a company set up your website for you, or you can go to WordPress.org to download the open source software and host it on your own Linux server. If you're interested in that latter option for whatever reason, whether it's more control or cheaper pricing, this tutorial is going to show you how to set up a Linux server with everything you need to run a WordPress website. And it's a fairly simple process, so it should be relatively quick. Now the reason we're using Ubuntu 19.04 today is because it was just released last month, so it's pretty new. If you want to use Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, you can do that as well. Regular versions of Ubuntu should be upgraded about once every six months. An LTS version of Ubuntu doesn't need to be upgraded for several years. That's why a lot of people use LTS Ubuntu on their servers is because they don't want to have to upgrade as often. These steps should work on either version of Ubuntu and they should be very similar. There really shouldn't be a whole lot of difference between 18.04 and 19.04 Ubuntu, just the specific versions of the packages we're installing. But you can still use the latest version of WordPress on either one. And finally, I'm going to be using a virtual private server company called DigitalOcean in this video. If you want $5 of free credit on DigitalOcean, you can get that at digitalocean.nots.co. And the only reason I'm using them today is because I have a lot of credit on there on my account. For a lot of my servers, I also use another company called Linode, and I do have a link at linode.nots.co. That one might not give you any free credit, but you can at least use it to help me out if you are going to sign up at Linode. Either of these VPS companies would work. I'm sure there are lots of other ones out there that work as well. The important thing is that you're using Ubuntu for the specific steps in this video. So that's all the introduction this should need. Without further ado, let's cut to the desktop and get started. All right, everyone. So like I said, we're using DigitalOcean for this. So we'll go to digitalocean.com to create our virtual private server first. I'm going to log into my account. Like I said, if you don't have an account, you can make one at digitalocean.nots.co or you can really use any other Linux server as well. We're going to create a new droplet here and just for WordPress, uh, it doesn't take a lot of resources. We are going to be using the latest version of Ubuntu, like I said before, but we are going to drop this size down to $5 a month. That's one gigabyte of RAM and one CPU. It's not like I'll actually be using this website after this tutorial's over. For your own website, you can start with the cheaper options, and then if pages are loading slowly, you can think about upgrading. I'm going to choose a data center near me, and we are going to name this droplet WordPress Tutorial. So we'll create that. All right, and that's finished. So we'll go ahead and copy that IP address. We'll open up a terminal on our local system and we are going to SSH in as the root user. And before I do that, I will go to my email and grab the root password. As you can see, DigitalOcean sends you the default root password and it will ask us to change it in just a second. I'll go ahead and turn my terminal text size up a little bit too so this is easier for you to see. We will accept the fingerprint the first time we connect. We will go ahead and paste in that root password. We'll paste it in again and we'll type in the new root password we want to set. Okay, and now we are logged into our new server as the root user. So I will close out of my email because we won't need that anymore. I'm also going to minimize Firefox because we won't need that for a little while either. I'm going to make my terminal a little bigger here. And the first thing we're going to do on any fresh system, I always just do an apt update. And then an apt upgrade. As you can see, there are 15 packages that were out of date in this image that they deployed for us. So I always like to make sure that I'm starting with an up-to-date base. Next, we will want to install the Apache web server. That is my web server of choice. So that's what we're going to be using. We will do apt install Apache 2. And we will accept the dependencies. So that's finished. We can do a systemctl status Apache 2 to see that that is indeed running. And we can also go into our Firefox window and navigate to our IP address, 134.209.119.16. As you can see, we've got our default Apache page. Now the next thing we're going to do is set up SSL. That's something I like to do early in the process. It's easier to do it now rather than later after we've installed WordPress. We'll just get it out of the way. And in order to install an SSL certificate, we are going to need a domain name. We can't just use our IP address here. So I'm actually going to log into Linode now because that is my DNS provider. I did a live stream a while ago about switching over to their DNS servers. 
So we will go into my nerdonthestreet.com domain name here, and we are going to add a new A record pointing to this IP address right here, which I will copy. So back in our DNS control panel, I will add an A record. The host name is going to be example.nerdonthestreet.com, and then our IP address, I will type that in there. Looks like Firefox copied the entire URL, we just want the IP address. And I'm going to set the time to live on this one down to five minutes because I will be deleting it later. So now we'll click save and that will be applied. As you can see, I also have my wildcard pointer here, my wildcard A record. I have that time to live set to five minutes. So we shouldn't have to wait too long before this example.nerdofthestreet.com starts working. And in fact, I haven't navigated to that recently. So we should just be able to go to example.nerdonthestreet.com. Okay, so our A record has not gone through yet because Firefox is trying to connect to the actual nerdofthestreet.com. You can see the SSL warning it's giving us. So I'm going to wait about five minutes for that DNS change to go through, and then we'll continue. All right, and it has been a few minutes. We'll go ahead and try this again. And we will take that S out of the HTTPS and just go to HTTP. So we can see now our domain name is active. Example.nerdofthestreet.com points to the IP address. That is on our server. We can verify that on our server actually or on any other computer by doing an NS lookup for example.nerdofthestreet.com. And we'll see it will come back as our server's IP address here. All right, so now, like I said, we're going to install CertBot. CertBot is going to take care of authenticating our Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. And in this video, we're going to do what CertBot recommends and use their PPA for it, rather than installing from the Ubuntu repository. So to add CertBot's repository, we will run add-apt-repository, PPA colon CertBot slash CertBot. We'll run that. And as you can see, the reason they recommend this is because they do backport newer versions of CertBot for any Ubuntu version. That way, when CertBot makes an update, you're not waiting two years until you upgrade to the next LTS or six months until you upgrade to the next version of Ubuntu before you get the update. So we'll press Enter to continue adding that. As you can see, our apt list did just update there. We will run one more apt update just because they recommend doing that after you add the new repository. But as you can see, it was redundant because we just did that. Now though, we can run apt install certbot, and we will also install python-certbot-apache, which is the plugin that will automatically configure Apache for us after it generates the certificate. We'll hit enter, and it's going to grab all those packages. All right, now, right now, we don't have our domain name specified in any of our Apache configuration files, even though we do have the domain name pointing to our website, as you can see here, we're still using the default Apache configuration file, which does not include this domain name. We want to specify the domain name in our configuration file so that Let's Encrypt knows which domain it's going to go out and generate an SSL cert for. And in my video I made a little while ago about installing Nextcloud, I modified the default configuration file in Apache and added the domain name to that. In this video, we're going to do it a little bit differently. People had a lot of questions about the way I did it last time, so this hopefully will be more clear. We are going to cd to Etsy, Apache 2, sites available, and if we do an ls-al, you can see right now we're using our 000default.conf file. So we're going to copy 000default, and we are going to copy it into a file called wordpress.conf. So now we've got a third file. We will nano into wordpress.conf, and we will customize this a little bit. This is where we're going to come over, and under server name, we will make this example.nerdonthestreet.com. Now down here under server admin, I will change that to my email address, jacob at nerdonthestreet.com. And our document root, we are going to customize this here as well. Like I said, when I mentioned that this was possible in my Nextcloud video, I got quite a few questions about it in the comments, so this is how this works. What we're going to do is I'll save that file. If we do an ls-al on var www right now, we've just got one folder called HTML. So we're going to make a new directory at var www nextcloud, and we're going to use that directory instead of our HTML directory. So this is at var www nextcloud. So we'll go in, once again, we are currently in our Apache sites available folder, so we will go into wordpress.conf and nano again. And we're going to change this document root to var www wordpress. So now, if somebody connects to this web server through our IP address, if they type in the numerical IP address into the, the address bar up here, it's going to send them still to this Apache 2 default page. But if somebody goes to this domain name specifically, the server name of our virtual host, it will send them to the document root of the virtual host, which is var www wordpress. 
And this is a cleaner configuration, especially when you're using SSL, because the default Apache configuration file, even if you do set the server name so that you can generate an SSL cert, Apache will still send all requests that it cannot match to another config file. It will send them to the document root of the default config file. So if somebody types in the wrong subdomain to your website, then they'll see an SSL error because the certificate's not valid for that subdomain. And that just kind of makes you look bad. It makes your website look like it's messed up even though really they just typed it in wrong. So this is a cleaner way to do it, is just by making a new configuration file and using that instead. So we'll go ahead and save that. We're going to run A2 Insight WordPress and it's saying enabling site WordPress. Now we can run systemctl reload Apache 2. And now that that site is active, we can go ahead and run certbot. So certbot, certbot is having us enter our contact information to put into the SSL cert, the email address. It also sends you warnings if your cert's about to expire. So we'll enter that. We will agree to the terms of service. I'm gonna hit no on sharing my email address with the EFF, and here it's asking us which domain name we want to activate HTTPS for. Since we just put this into our Apache configuration file, it already knows that's what we want. So we will select that number, and it's verifying. It's done verifying, cleaning up its challenges, and now we are going to set Apache to redirect to HTTPS when somebody connects over HTTP. All right, so now we have an SSL cert. Next, we're going to install PHP and MySQL on our web server. And actually, we're not going to be using MySQL. We'll be using MariaDB, which is an alternative that is entirely compatible with MySQL. So we'll run apt install PHP 7.2 lib Apache 2 mod PHP 7.2, which will hook PHP in with Apache. We will also install MariaDB server and we will install php-mysql to hook in Apache with MariaDB, or rather to hook in PHP with MariaDB. So we'll run all of that. It will install the dependencies. All right, and that's all finished installing. Now in my next cloud video, I showed you how to install PHP My Admin, which was a web GUI for managing our MySQL or MariaDB databases. In this video, instead of using that, we're just going to create the database and user from the command line. So we'll connect to our MariaDB server by running mysql-u root-p, and it's going to have us enter our root password for the system. So now we're connected to our MariaDB server. First, we'll create our user, which is going to be called WordPress. So we'll run create user, and in single quotes, we'll put the name of the user, WordPress, at, and then in single quotes, we'll put the name of our system, which is localhost. That's where we're creating the user. And then we'll do identified by, and in single quotes, we'll put the password we want to use. I'm going to use a very simple password here because this is a tutorial. And at the end of our line, we put a semicolon. So this is how SQL syntax works. It's a little confusing because it tries to be natural sounding language, but it's obviously a very old computer program, so it's not entirely natural. But in SQL, it's common to write the commands in uppercase just to separate it out from the user specified settings in lowercase. You could write these commands in lowercase. The commands themselves are not case sensitive in SQL, but anything inside of the single quotes are case sensitive, including obviously our password. And I actually messed this up here. I put a double quote there at the end instead of a single quote, so I'm glad I saw that. This command will create the user though, as well as the password, so we'll run that. As you can see, query okay tells you that the command succeeded. Zero rows affected is because we didn't actually change any of our databases. We just created the user in our system. So now we'll create our database, which is going to be done with create database WordPress, and a semicolon at the end there. And now you can see it says one row affected because we are working with the actual databases now. And finally, we will give our WordPress user access to the database by running grant all privileges on WordPress dot asterisk to WordPress inside of single quotes at localhost inside of single quotes with a semicolon at the end. So what we're saying here is we want to grant all privileges on the database WordPress. This asterisk means all tables inside of WordPress. Now right now it's going to be an empty database, but if there were any tables in there, this would grant all privileges on all tables to our WordPress user on the local system. We'll run that. You can see once again, zero rows affected because we didn't actually affect any data in the database, but now our WordPress user will be able to access that database. So at this point, we can run quit to get out of SQL. And now we're ready to actually install WordPress. Now, something I didn't touch on earlier is there actually is a WordPress package in Ubuntu. We can run apt search WordPress here, 
and it's going to come back with all the packages that include WordPress in the name. You can see there's one package just called WordPress, and it's a weblog manager. That is a very antiquated description of WordPress, but that's what WordPress is. It's a blogging engine. Now we could just install this. We could run apt install WordPress. In fact, we probably could have skipped some of the prior steps if we wanted to just run apt install WordPress. We're going to install it manually today though because with web applications, I like to install manually. That way I'm in control of the updates. I can update it you know, separately from the software on the actual system. And WordPress has a built-in updater that should be able to run once we get it all configured up. That seems cleaner to me than installing from the apt package and then either being stuck on one version until Ubuntu updates it or WordPress updating itself after we install it and now the version we have installed is not what we installed originally from apt. It just seems a little messy to me. So we're going to cd into var ww wordpress. Remember that's the folder we created earlier. Oh, I called that folder nextcloud, didn't I? Whoops, well why don't I fix that? Um, we'll go ahead and move our nextcloud folder to wordpress here. So now we can do an ls-al and we've just renamed that folder to WordPress. Let me go ahead and fix that configuration in Etsy, Apache 2, sites, available, wordpress.config. All right, so I, I typed it incorrectly in here. Um, I just made the folder called the wrong thing earlier because I was talking about Nextcloud when I made that folder earlier. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you have to talk out loud and explain what you're doing while you're doing it. We'll cd into our WordPress folder now that it exists, and we are going to wget the WordPress file. You can find that file at wordpress.org. We'll just click get WordPress here, and we're going to use the tarball because it's a little bit smaller than the zip file. So I just copied the link to this download link here, and we will come back to our terminal, paste that in, and we'll hit enter. You can see it was 10.16 megabytes. It took one-fifth of a second to download, and we can do an ls, and we can see it's right here. So we'll run tar xvf latest. The x stands for extract, v is for verbose, so it's going to list all the files as it's extracting them, and f stands for file because we're specifying the name of the file we want to extract. We'll hit enter, and it's going to extract all of those. We can do an ls and see that there is now a folder called WordPress. If we do an ls-al, you can see this is a directory here. So the first thing we'll do now is remove the latest.tar file. We don't need that anymore. It's been extracted. Next, we are going to move everything in WordPress to the current folder. And so now if we do an ls-al, and by the way, that was the directory of WordPress forward slash and asterisk to select everything in that directory. And we're moving it to the current directory, which is represented by a single dot. So now we can do an ls-al. You can see all the files in here. We can do a remove directory on WordPress. And we know that WordPress was empty because that just worked. If there were any files inside of the WordPress folder, we would have just gotten an error message from remove directory saying that it was not an empty directory. So now if we do an ls-al, we just have our WordPress files. The last thing we want to do before we go and actually install WordPress from the web interface is set our permissions. Right now, you can see everything we just extracted from that tarball is owned by nobody. In addition, the current directory is owned by root. Now, like I said earlier, WordPress actually has an auto-updater function. WordPress can download newer files when they get updated, and it can download those straight to our web directory here so that you don't have to worry about manually uploading new files for updates. However, for that to function properly, we need this directory to have the correct permissions. So to do this, we're going to run chown capital R www data www data and dot. So what we're doing here is we're changing ownership. The capital R is the flag for recursive on chown. We've got our user www data separated with a colon from our group www data. And then the directory that we're changing ownership of is the current directory. Now you might think that you want to run this on dot slash asterisk. And the reason you might think that is because you want Apache www data to own all of these files, right? However, if we ran this command right here on dot slash asterisk, that would only affect the files in this directory. It would not affect the directory itself, which is var www WordPress. That means that Apache would be allowed to modify the existing files in here and in any of these directories that are in this folder, in these subdirectories that could go and create new files. But Apache would not be able to create new files in this 
base var www WordPress directory. And it needs to be able to create new files just to get through the installation process we're about to go through. So that's why we're running this command on dot. Dot is the current directory. So we are changing permissions on var www WordPress itself. And then because we're using the recursive command or the recursive flag, we will also still change ownership of all of the files inside of here. So with that said, we'll hit enter and that command will complete successfully. If we do another ls-al, you can see now not only are all of our files and directories in here owned by Apache, but the current directory itself, which is var www WordPress, is also owned by Apache. So for now, that should be everything we need to do. Um, just to demonstrate, if we go back to our web browser here and we, let's copy our IP address one more time. If we put our IP address into our URL bar here, you can see we are still getting the Apache Ubuntu default page because like I said earlier, we left our default Apache site in place. However, if we go to example.nerdonthestreet.com, we are still going to be connecting to the same server. We will even be connecting to the same IP address, but because we are connecting using the host name, example.nerdofthestreet.com, we'll hit enter, and it's going to send us to WordPress. Apache saw that we were connecting with this host name. It looked in our configuration file that we set up earlier, and it directed us to the WordPress directory. So now we can continue with WordPress's famous five minute install. Select our language. You can see here it's telling you that if Apache can't create the WP config file, then you might have to do it yourself. But Apache will be able to create that because we set those permissions just a second ago. So we'll continue. Our database name, like we set up, was WordPress. Our username is also WordPress. Password is password, as you saw. The database host is localhost. And our table prefix we'll leave at the default, WP underscore. So we'll hit submit. You can see WordPress succeeded in creating the WP config file if we do an ls-al wp-config.php was just created, so we will run the installation. Our site title is going to be example sites. You can set this to whatever you want for your website or blog. The username I'm going to use is admin, password. I'm just using weak passwords in this video. We will confirm the use of our weak password, and we will type in my email address, which is jacob at nerdinthestreet.com. And we'll hit install, and we'll hit log in. So at this point, the website is functional. If we go back to example.nerdofthestreet.com, we've got a very interesting default theme. Interesting as in, I don't really understand this theme. This looks pretty bad. I don't know why they chose this as the 2019 default theme. I don't even see the login button. Here it is. OK, so we'll log in, admin, and we'll use our password. I'll remember me. And now we're logged into WordPress. And that's really all there is to installing WordPress. Um, from here, we can do some other things. We can install plugins like an SMTP plugin for sending email through, uh, we'll go to add new and search SMTP. And we can send email through SMTP instead of directly from our web server, which is going to be a much better setup. So we can install plugins with one click. We can go to appearance and pick out a different theme. We'll add a new theme. You can scroll through all of them that are on the WordPress website. This one looks cool. We'll install that theme. All right, we'll activate that theme. We should probably activate our SMTP plugin as well. So once we've got that plugin, we can go in here and you know set the plugin settings with our SMTP credentials. We can go back to our base directory, example.nerdofthestreet.com, and we can see our new theme that we just installed. So yeah, WordPress is very easy to use. Well, it's easy to make a website. Uh, it's, it's not as easy for me personally to customize WordPress like I can customize my favorite content management system, Composer. But for a lot of people, WordPress is a great option if you're just looking for a simple blogging platform because you can just create a new post and it's very easy. What you see is what you get editing. So yeah, this is not a video about using WordPress. It was just a video about installing WordPress. So even though there are some other settings that I would normally set on a WordPress installation, such as time zone and week start here, most of the WordPress default settings are fairly sane. And at this point, you can use your website however you'd like. And we can even log out and see what it looks like for the general public right there. So if you guys have any questions about this, if you do want me to make a series on you know, using WordPress, or if you've got questions about installing any other web applications, content management systems, or anything, leave those suggestions down in the comments section below. If this video was helpful to you in setting up your WordPress site, please consider joining the Nerd Club at nerdclub.nots.co. 
You can go there to support me by paying $3 a month and I will continue to make videos like this one, helping people set up free and open software on their own computers and servers. We are working our way up to our $50 a month goal. We've been working on that for a while, so I would appreciate any support from anyone who's not already a member. Of course, a huge thank you though to our current Nerd Club members for supporting our content and making this video possible. And finally, if you want me to set up your server for you instead of doing all of that yourself, you can go to managedby.nots.co. Fill out a project intake form and we can talk about pricing. WordPress is one of the apps that I have here in the list of popular applications and it is something that I have experience maintaining over a long period of time. But for now, that's everything I had to talk about in this video. So I'm Jacob Kauf and I'm the Nerd on the Street and I'll see you guys later. Bye.